Hey everybody, today Rado runs down the rise of Queensdale. Spoiler free. Now, this is a legacy style dice worker placement game where two to four players take on the role of medieval lords and ladies trying to help develop the Queensdale Valley. And the way it works is at the beginning of every round, everybody rolls their dice. And then in turn, we place our dice, worker placement style, to either gather resources, say some lumber, or say some clay, or if we rolled A for action, we get to put our dice over here on the big action board where we can do stuff like build new buildings, get food, give food to the people to increase their morale, um, use food and money to hire specialists, convert money into other types of goods, send our scout around in the valley to, to um, collect herbs, uh, which as you move around, can give you access to points or more resources or other types of things. Who knows what all these herbs lie in wait? Well, over the course of the campaign, everything about this game upgrades. New types of surprises will be found hidden under the herbs. New stickers will be able to be put on the dice so your action dice evolve over the course of the campaign. New types of actions will get added to the action board. New types of specialists can be hired that get pulled out of the bag and give access to special players. There are just tons of ways that the game evolves and grows through the nine, well, the race to win nine games. The first player to have won nine full sessions will be the winner of the overall campaign. And one of the interesting things about this is if there seems to be a player who, because of you know good fortune with the dice rolls or the events that might pop out at different times when the courier shows up or when certain calamitous things might happen, maybe luck has favored one player over another, don't worry. The design for Queensdale is so player friendly, there are a lot of ways to ensure that if one player is screaming ahead, the other players will get a chance to catch up. There's no such thing as a runaway leader. One of the way that happens is if I win my first game, next time, instead of scoring 10 points, I've got to score 16 but everybody else just has to score 10. If somehow, in spite of this handicap, I were to win again, now I've got to score 22 points in my third game. And you better believe other players are gonna be able to score 10 points before I can get 22. Also, if you lose in games, that's when you collect seals. And you can turn these seals in to upgrade your dice and make them more powerful. But not only are we upgrading the dice and creating new worker action placement spots, we are building in this valley. That's what we're here to do. You'll notice this. This is my little burrow. I've got one farm here, which allows me to convert goods into money to store so that if I go into the next game, I can start with a certain advantage. If I didn't get to use all my resources, I carry them into the next game. But I've also got these empty places where I can build. So say I've collected enough stone and clay and wood and money to build, oh, I don't know, of all these buildings that are available at the game, let's say a bakery. There we go. So let's say I'm going to build a bakery. Now, how do I put this in here? You may notice these tiles are in tight. You can't really get them out. That's where maybe the coolest gameplay accessory ever, the plunger. You use the plunger to pick these tiles up so that you can upgrade your landscape. And now I've got a farm and I've got a bakery that's gonna generate um, bread for me so that I don't have to waste my action rolls to gather bread the old-fashioned way. I make bread for myself. And um, over the course of the game, of course, there's going to be many, many opportunities to build. Although, before, I, you know, once I've filled up these three construction spaces, I will have to start um, spending resources to convert empty fields into other build sites so that I can build even more buildings. And over the course of the campaign, you might focus on uh, being a building dynamo, just getting tons of buildings with all kinds of school special powers. You might focus on increasing your scout's ability so he can travel far and wide and just pick up tons and tons of herbs and reveal all the secrets before he even moves. You could focus on your dice. There are so many different avenues for exploration and advancement in this game, it's really amazing. But my only complaint about the game is, 
Well, the designers, Inca and Marcus Brand, recently they've been doing a lot of Exit the Escape Room games, and so they've kind of developed neat, fun, little kind of mini games inside of the game. And every time those came up, Jen and I were absolutely tickled pink with them, but every single time it always felt like they didn't necessarily work as well with two. And I think there's one other thing that some people might complain about. This game does not allow for changing number of players. If you start out playing Rise of Queensdale as a three player game, it will always only ever be a three player game. In fact, Here's a spot that's supposed to get wiped out in three-player games. There's a sticker the game comes with to cover this up permanently so you can never play with four players. For some people, that lack of flexibility might be a problem. And, uh, but if you can get over that, if you've got a group who you can steadily play, probably upwards of about 20 sessions of this game, which on average last 30 to 40 minutes long, you're going to have a blast. It's a really great example. There are so many neat, neat elements in the game. One other thing I'll mention, even though you can continue to play in this world you've built up at the end of the campaign, I don't think Queensdale does as good a job as, say, Charterstone at making an ongoing evergreen game. You can keep playing, but once you're done with the campaign, I think you might say, well, let's put that back on the shelf and maybe we'll get it out in a few years. But Oh man, what a ride it was all the way to the end. Jen and I had a fantastic time. We love dice worker placement. We love legacy style things. Um, and we love this plunger. And that was a quick rundown of the Rise of Queensdale. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Oh, bye bye.